Hello and welcome to Newsroom. We're live from Islamabad and I'm your host, Sharmeen Ali. Uh, we're going to be talking today about uh, the uh, the main, uh, the, the most senior person in the State Department of the United States who is responsible for South Asia, Alice Wells' visit uh, to Islamabad. She has acknowledged that uh, Pakistan has made um, great progress in, in the implementation of FATF recommendations. In her exact words, she said it is heartening to see that Pakistan's government has made significant progress on these matters and that too in a short time and uh, she also acknowledged the scarcity of resources that Pakistan's government is working with towards uh, these goals. Also we'll be talking about how Prime Minister Imran Khan now in his three-day visit to Davos for the World Economic Forum how he is going to maximize the potential of this particular forum in order to project Pakistan's uh, image and also to in increase economic opportunities for the country. We'll be talking about that uh, on our program as well today. And uh, to begin with, um, when we're now going to discuss the challenges that Pakistan faces with the FATF right now. Uh, the Minister uh, for Economic Affairs, Hamad Azhar, is in Beijing to uh, have uh, the points reviewed by the FATF team about how far Pakistan's made progress towards their recent requirements. Um, let's uh, have a look at this uh, report first, and then we'll be talking to our guests. Senior U.S. diplomat Alice Wells applauded Pakistan's efforts to implement the Financial Action Task Force's 27-point action plan as the global body against money laundering and terror financing is set to meet in Beijing to take up Islamabad's case. The comments came after she was briefed by senior Ministry of Interior officials about Pakistan's efforts to meet the FATF's requirements. In her words, it is heartening to see that Pakistan's government has made significant progress on these matters and that too in a short amount of time. Pakistan was put on the FATF's grey list in June 2018 for 15 months. However, due to inadequate progress, Pakistan's stay on the list was extended by four months at the last review held in October 2019. One of the key areas in which Pakistan was found to be lagging at the last evaluation was the poor conviction rate in terror financing cases. Pakistan's efforts against anti-terrorism funding and money laundering will be evaluated in the meeting between FATF and Pakistani authorities in a joint group meeting in Beijing. Islamabad's progress will now be reassessed at the Watchdog's upcoming meeting in Paris held on 16th of February. And uh, Alice Wells also uh, tweeted uh, uh, earlier that U.S. and Pakistan share the goals of increasing bilateral trade and Pakistan's economic reforms are making it more attractive uh, environment for uh, U.S. businesses, moving 28 slots in the World Bank's ease of doing business ranks in 2019. And she said she was glad to meet the Commerce Advisor, Abdul Razak Dao, to discuss this progress. So some positive uh, uh, statements coming out from um, the State Department representative. Representative Alice Wells. So now we have with us in our studios uh, Ms. Farida Faisal, who's uh, she's a Dr. Farida Faisal, who's uh, an economist. She's going to be talking about this with us today. Thank, thank you. you for joining us, ma'am. Uh, thank you. Um, so uh, your comments on Alice Wells' uh, remarks that Pakistan has yeah. achieved a lot with FATF and mm -hmm. with relatively few resources mm. and in a short amount of time. Yes. It's been a lot but, of pressure. Yes, I think documentation of the economy is uh, one of the areas where the government has performed well. And it also has shown conviction. It also has pursued its case very well. I think the Minister of um, for Economic Affairs, Mr. Hamad Azhar, he is uh, heading this delegation also, which is um, you know uh, working with the joint working group of the FATF. Mm -hmm. And so they have prepared this case, uh, you know, a, a, a very complete, comprehensive, 600-page documents answering those 22 queries actually, mm -hmm. which were placed upon Pakistan and why. Pakistan was retained in that grey list. Mm -hmm. So we are the countries, one of the countries which is being monitored. Mm -hmm. We are not the only country, by the way, let me tell you. But yes, the conditionalities and the queries uh, or, or the action plans which have been uh, placed on Pakistan are a little more stringent. Mm -hmm. So well, in that are context, currently the countries that are on the blacklist and uh, one of on them the blacklist, mm -hmm. there is Iran mm -hmm. and then there is North Korea. Mm -hmm. So these are uh, the, the two countries where, which they say are not cooperating at all. And the, the repercussions and then they are, of being on the blacklist uh, are uh, on the blacklist are then the advisory. Now there are thirty nine members, uh, Sharmeen of the Financial Action, Action Task Force, in which United States is there. Unfortunately, India is also there, which you know doesn't play up very well for us. But 
these are the important countries. The G7 countries are there. So the, uh, what FATF does is that it, it's a watchdog. It then advises its members not to invest in these countries or not to have, let's say, um, uh, very cordial financial relationships with these countries. So you are kind of economically isolated right. if you go into the blacklist. Okay. But as far as the gray list is concerned, also that kind of casts a negative shadow mm -hmm. on your economy. But, so therefore, it is. It would be best if you come out of that group who are so closely monitored. Right. And in the grey list, also, as I was telling you, Pakistan uh, is status is that, uh, you know, very short time frames are given to us, yeah. and uh, the action plans, their implementation is is very being very closely monitored in. Right. The last Pakistan. plenary meeting was in October, and they yes. gave Pakistan four months till yes. February till the next one in order. In to fact, comply. we were given some extra time also mm. till February to you know, to comply or to mm. show improvement. Mm. But really, um, if you look at it, um, Shermeen, uh, FATF is more of arm twisting, I would say, by the big boys. Because it's not that Pakistan has not performed well or other countries have done better than us. It is maybe also kind of political lobbying which goes on in these organizations, uh, due to which I think that Miss Ellis Wells' uh, comments are very valid and important for Pakistan, and it mm. gives us hope mm -hmm. that uh, you know our uh, position would not be further relegated. Mm -hmm. Right. So now uh, the Minister for Economic Affairs, Hamad Azhar, is yes. in uh, Beijing, and along with representatives from the National Terrorism Authority (NACTA), yeah. uh, the Foreign Ministry, uh, State Bank Interior Ministry, mm -hmm. Financial Monitoring Unit, and they're all going to uh, be yes. there to present our report to the FATF members, and uh, we're going to be uh, defending our compliance uh, on 22 major action points given yes. uh, by the FATF. Now, yes. the main ones right now that we have actually, like you're saying, managed to achieve is to uh, formalize a large part of the economy, which yes. was previously informal, and that led to terror financing and money laundering abilities for people. Mm -hmm. So um, now that um, uh, the, the progress that we've made, the measures mm -hmm. that we've taken, how far along do you think we are in, well, all, in see, combating in terms, that? In terms of getting the laws right, we have the kind of mechanisms now. We have a, a financial monitoring unit which uh, in the interior ministry, which is uh, particularly been, uh, you know, um, created for the very reason uh, that it should uh, document the economy. It should cut, uh, you know, uh, uh, it should uh, kind of clear away any lacunas where uh, illegal money can be parked or where terror financing can happen. So. Overall, you see, as far as the policy uh, level is concerned, that is uh, quite satisfactory. Mm -hmm. But then comes the implementation. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you see, you have, for example, uh, 500 cases which were registered under mm -hmm. terror financing, but only uh, 55 out of those, uh, you could see that the conviction uh, took place. So the conviction rate mm -hmm. or actual implementation on ground is an area which has been, you know, um, a, a problem for Pakistan. Right, because the Interior Ministry has said that significant progress has been made on legislative and administrative exactly. matters. But execution has also been completed to a great extent. But uh, you feel that more has to be done. It more that. has to be done. And then uh, the terror outfits, which this FATF, more than a thousand, which they have identified, uh, more action, solid action against those is required. Mm. But then again, you must remember that these... Um, non-government bodies, they are also doing some level of social service in Pakistan. So definitely the Pakistani authorities have to be very careful when they are moving against these outfits because really not all of them are just terror financing. Some of them are also providing important uh, social services as well. Mm -hmm. So, you know, th that is an area where... Um, uh, the the government will have to move forward very carefully. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, now, the team is going to be giving details on cases against banned outfits, yes. which are also taking place at the moment. Uh, mm -hmm. There's also uh, n the number of sentences against uh, members of proscribed organizations. So um, a lot of uh, this, the steps that have been taken towards yes. this will also be um, presented to the FATF. Actually, Shermeen, it is in Pakistan's self-interest to make sure that uh, the these, um, you know, uh, th that the laws are implemented, that we really clean up our own act and that uh, organizations uh, which are part of terror networks, they should be identified and punished. 
you know, it works in our own favor because also. Because those are usually criminal groups and uh, involved criminal in criminal activities. They are criminal groups activities. not only, but also uh, because they are, mm, uh, they are, you can say, uh, the, the whole terror outfits, they are uh, not only working against uh, the economy of Pakistan, but the people of Pakistan also. Mm. So you see, it is it is not only an economic matter, but it is for our own survival mm. that we need to identify these groups and we need to, you know, take stern action against them. Not only because FATF is asking us to do that. Of mm. course, that is one of the consideration. But overall, if the governance improves and if um, if the wrongful activities are identified and um, uh, and you know eliminated. It works in our benefit. Right, okay. And then also uh, one of uh, the, uh, uh, the points that they'll be speaking about is registration, uh, the process of registering seminaries, which are the madrasas, which yes. is a, a part of this program as well. Yes. And this has been on the agenda of this government for uh, since the beginning to regularize the seminaries, not to just eliminate them, but to sort of bring those students into the mainstream into for education, mainstream. Yes. which would prevent um, you know them being sort exactly. of disenfranchised. Yes, I, I think so that is the kind of reform which is required mm -hmm. it is not just taking action against them mm -hmm. but as you said very rightly bringing them into the mainstream enabling them uh, to continue with the good social services which they are doing right. so we are not just moving against all seminaries mm -hmm. we are only moving against those who are creating problems who are part of terror networks you know who are against the uh, the, the uh, citizens of pakistan uh, so identifying them and then enabling them to improve their stance, that is going to be part of the implementation, which at the moment is a little weak. Right, and students in the seminaries are going to be taught not only religion, but they're also going to be taught the, the sciences and the other art subjects, so that yes. they're able to give their matriculation and intermediate exams, because as the Prime Minister yes. said, he wants them to be judges no, and generals exactly. and all uh, other than that, the professions, are, you doctors. You see, uh, some of these action plans also talk about strengthening your judicial systems. You see, and and giving protection to those uh, those, those systems as well. So uh, you see, uh, the improvements in the commerce and trade, improvements in the judicial systems, overall administrative <coughs> systems. That is what is required to really show action on the ground. And right. really, at this time, it works in our favor. However, however, this is important to be said that to be you know to consider uh, this is this is an activity which is trying to you know tarnish the image of pakistan on the whole using this forum that has to be very carefully uh, along with cooperation of some of the members of the fatf uh, so that this kind of agenda may be of the you know of of, of certain governments of 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 the lobbies against pakistan uh, they should not, uh, uh, you know, be able to fulfill such agendas, which is there only to tarnish the reputation of Pakistan. Otherwise, fulfilling uh, these action plans works in Pakistan's favor. Right. And um, the other thing that uh, I'd like to ask now, we have a, uh, with us online Mr. Muzammil Aslam, who is an economist. Uh, thank you so much, sir, for joining us online. You're welcome. Sir, I'd like to ask you now that Pakistan has sent a delegation to Beijing to um, re present its report under the Minister for Economic Affairs leading the delegation, Hamad uh, Azhar Saab. Um, in your opinion, how far along now has Pakistan come since the last uh, plenary in October when uh, Pakistan was given this four-month uh, grace period to present its case by February? I think uh, we, have, uh, we have done quite a lot in a very short uh, window. Uh, the notable things, if you uh, see, you know, uh, they have done uh, the NSS uh, national saving, uh, entire national saving uh, deposit will be uh, rectified through uh, biometrics. This is the first thing I, which I believe is going to be a very uh, hectic and big exercise, but the government has issued the notification. The other thing is uh, they have imposed penalties on the banking financial sector. Recently, we just saw uh, more than five commercial banks were uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, compliance and KYC issue. Uh, thirdly, they have frozen the uh, uh, terrorist uh, activist account as well, and they have uh, taken the stringent uh, actions against them as well. Uh, so overall, uh, plus the smuggling the tub on the uh, uh, illegal trade, 
they, uh, there has been quite a lot of uh, activity on that point. Last uh, 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 curve on the currency smuggling, be uh, it through airports or from the border, the government has uh, done quite a lot. So I believe uh, Pakistan at least have done a lot just to avoid blacklist. But if, uh, if you look at closely, uh, space of two, three months, uh, these reforms are not easy, so one should give them, uh, one should give a credit to Pakistan uh, regarding and the previous years in implementing the FATF conditionality. Uh, right. So, so as far as uh, the steps that Pakistan has taken against uh, money laundering, we mentioned that um, there's been penalties on, uh, you, you'd mentioned, on, on financial institutions that are non-compliant. There's also a lot of documentation taking place right now everywhere, whether it's in banks, the consumers are having to undertake a lot of documentation at airports. Uh, there's a lot of restriction on the you know, amounts of uh, money going in and out, etc. So your comments on that, sir? I think uh, 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 Pakistan is, uh, uh, although uh, one can easily uh, 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 make it fit on Pakistan, it's a short-term pain and long-term gain at the moment. Uh, whatever the reforms and documentation we are going to um, we are having uh, some technical difficulties with our guests online. Uh, Dr. Farida, we are yes. just talking about now um, the steps against money laundering. Now, mm. we are seeing that Pakistan's economy and the, the, mm. the public here has been hit very hard mm. in some ways by the um, necessary but difficult steps that the government has had to take as far as yeah. IMF uh, is concerned, their requirements, and then FATF as well. Mm -hmm. Suddenly, the whole system of the way Pakistan worked is, you know, changed overnight almost for Pakistanis. Mm -hmm. So we were talking about the additional documentation, etc. Mm -hmm. There's a lot more required now in banks mm -hmm. when you're transferring money out, if you're, one is traveling. Mm -hmm. So your comments on this now? Yes, of course. It is a, a very difficult exercise. I mean, um, uh, documentation of the economy uh, requires and uh, but I would say that a lot of back-end work has been done because of the improved systems which are digital systems mm -hmm. so uh, integration uh, and then monitoring by the state bank also that has 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 had a, a, a big impact on the way business is being done in Pakistan and that has imposed a cost on us as well. Mm -hmm. But you see, to identify the defaulters, it is difficult. Mm -hmm. um, so everyone has to, uh, I think the entire system uh, needs to have uh, reform itself and for some people it is can be quite a big burden. Uh, those who are already doing their uh, business, um, you know, uh, in a fair and transparent matter, manner, for them it is not an issue. Mm -hmm. But the real issue is how to identify the defaulters. Mm -hmm. And so th that is why the entire economy, which it, uh, before uh, this, um, may, there were many areas which were grey or dark areas. So now they, they need to be identified and they need to be uh, strict action taken against those who are not complying. Right, and uh, as far as anti-money laundering uh, measures take place, that's also uh, important for Pakistan so that mm -hmm. You know, the, you don't have money flowing out of the country, which is Pakistan's, mm. which we've had in the past. So, for that one, also needs to have cooperation with foreign governments. Exactly. So, I mean, that is, uh, you know, quite, um, um, you know, it's quite shocking. How come FATF is not moving against some of its member states, which are providing these safe havens where the money, um, the uh, money which is raised through corruption, which is, you know, gained through wrongful means, it is being uh, transferred out of the country. So it is unfortunate that uh, Financial Action Task Force is not, uh, you know, putting enough emphasis on those countries which are the beneficiaries of these this kind of uh, transfer of funds outside the country. Right, and we also spoke of uh, the resources because with mm. relatively few resources, Pakistan has achieved this. And I mean, uh, everything from technology to monetary resources, it's been very a, a huge strain on Pakistan so, to actually exactly. fulfill these requirements. Exactly. So, uh, right. So now moving on to our next uh, segment, which is about uh, Prime Minister Imran Khan's uh, trip to Davos. Over the next two days, he will be there projecting Pakistan and uh, uh, and kind of uh, maximizing the potential to bring investment and business economic opportunities to our country. Let's have a look at his agenda for this summit. Prime Minister Imran Khan and U.S. President Donald Trump will meet this week on the sidelines of World Economic Forum in Davos, Switzerland. 
The Premier leaves for Davos where he will be delivering the keynote address at the World Economic Forum special session and his interaction at the Pakistan strategy dialogue with CEOs and corporate leaders. On the sidelines of the summit, the Prime Minister will hold bilateral meetings with several world leaders. Several meetings are also scheduled with wide range of corporate, business, technology and finance executives and representatives of international financial institutions. Throughout his engagements at Davos, the Prime Minister will share Pakistan's vision and achievements in the areas of economy, peace and stability, trade, business and investment opportunities. He will also highlight the current situation in the Indian-occupied Jammu and Kashmir and Pakistan's perspective on key regional and international issues. Foreign Minister Shah Mahmood Qureshi, Advisor on Commerce Abdul Razak Daoud, Special Assistant on Overseas Pakistani Zulfikar Abbas Bukhari and Special Assistant National Security Division Muid Yusuf are accompanying the Premier. Uh, so, a lot of work ahead in the next three days in Davos for the Prime Minister. So, Dr. Farida Faisal, um, mm -hmm. let me ask you this now. The forum is going to be held from between the 21st, which is today, yes. till uh, the, the 23rd, sure. Thursday. So, um, the Prime Minister will be delivering a um, special ses uh, session of the World Economic Forum mm -hmm. and he'll interact with uh, corporate leaders mm -hmm. also at, pa at the Pakistan Strategy Dialogue. Yes. So, uh, of course, Kashmir is going to be very much on this agenda, but also he's going to take this as, as an opportunity to project Pakistan's positive image. Pakistan's positive image and do remember that it is basically a meeting of the corporate heads as well. So maybe he is going to reach out to investors uh, to, you know, consider Pakistan as a destination uh, for uh, future investments, considering that our overall image is improving, our ease of doing business improving, uh, is improving. We are doing well in terms of fulfilling the FATF conditionalities. So definitely, uh, that is why uh, Minister of Commerce, uh, Mr. Rizal, Daud is also there with him. Uh, he is going to try to find invest investors and investment opportunities for Pakistan. Right, and uh, the, there is also, uh, uh, you know, the, this news that he will be meeting President Trump on the sidelines. This is going to be the third meeting mm. between President Trump and Prime Minister Imran yes. Khan uh, in the, you know, since both of since he's become Prime yes. Minister. And uh, uh, one of the items on the agenda, obviously, the Prime Minister is mm -hmm. trying very hard to uh, address the issue of Kashmir. Kashmir we know that, exactly. but. But also, President Trump said that he would, um, when in their first meeting, that he would like to increase the trade potential between Pakistan and the United States, yes. which is potential, which has way more potential that we're uh, than we're utilizing yes, right exactly. now. Yes, exactly. So you see, uh, uh, the um, you know uh, this time. Um, uh, the World Economic Forum says that this is a stakeholders meeting for a cohesive and sustainable world. Mm. So mm, that is basically the, the, the basic agenda of uh, uh, the World Economic Forum this, uh, this time in 2020. So I think the Premier will be talking uh, about overall how the SDGs are being achieved in Pakistan, uh, about the human aspect as well. And there he would probably also be including the human rights situation in Kashmir. He would be uh, talking about a more inclusive world. He would be talking about Pakistan's relevance in this emerging new world. Because you see, um, at this forum, it is basically a networking forum. And all the important uh, influencers and leaders, they are there. So it is not just about meeting Trump. Mm. Yes, that meeting is very important because Certainly, uh, you know, um, uh, Mr. Trump's, uh, you know, having a, a kind of a, um, alignment with Mr. Trump is, is, is beneficial for Pakistan at this point in time. Mm -hmm. uh, it can increase our economic opportunities as well as many other um, benefits can be derived from having a congenial relationship with the United States. Absolutely. We now have online with us Dr. Vakar Ahmed, who's an economist. Thank you for joining us, sir. Thank you. So uh, the Prime Minister at the World Economic Forum is going to be presenting uh, Pakistan uh, over there in their various sessions, etc. And uh, how do you think Pakistan's role is going to be portrayed now in the theme of this year's summit, which is stakeholders for a cohesive and sustainable world? Yes, thank you very much. I think first and foremost, uh, the narrative for Pakistan, uh, uh, the narrative from Pakistan is going to be uh, one which highlights uh, the issues around regional 
uh, uh, tensions which could sort of convert into global systemic issues for the entire world. Uh, we are not the only ones who are facing the impact of uh, regional tensions. It is going to be Middle East, it is going to be South Asia, Far East, which is going to be really, uh, the economies of these re the regions are going to be facing uh, these concerns. So I think this is the first thing which probably uh, the, the, the Pakistani delegation and the leadership is going to highlight over there that how, how detrimental the lack of peace in the region could be for the economies here, as well as for the pursuit of sustainable development goals. Second thing, of course, is to get uh, the trade process normalized. Currently, we do see that trade restrictions are being erected by countries. The, the protectionism is on the rise uh, within regions as well. I think this is something which, again, doesn't go well with developing economies which are trying to uh, sort of uh, 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 be, be integrated in global value chains. Uh, trying to promote their exports abroad. Uh, and, and perhaps I think the third and uh, a key issue could be uh, to, to promote uh, uh, foreign direct investment uh, across region as well as uh, within, of course, uh, uh, um, uh, South Asia region. Now, we have a lot of multinational companies that are going to be over there, and I'm sure the Pakistan delegation is going to be in liaison with them, trying to attract uh, whatever attention we can from them in trying to lure in their investments. Right, and uh, also Pakistan's sustainable development goals as far as economic inclusivity and uh, poverty elimination, etc., are these items going to be discussed as well? Indeed, and, and I think uh, uh, probably it is best... Uh, uh, that, that our brief, uh, Pakistan's brief, uh, should, should, should really highlight the role which developing uh, countries had been promised by the developed world uh, towards achieving the SDGs, uh, uh, particularly in the context of financing uh, for SDGs. Uh, the developed countries had made very strong pledges uh, back in 2015, and they, they now really need to act on those pledges uh, yes, so that the developing countries can, are, can, can sort of achieve uh, the SDGs in a timely manner. Right. And uh, also climate change is going to be a big uh, aspect in this uh, uh, forum. And Pakistan's making a lot of efforts. They've been, our government's been recognized for their 10 billion tree tsunami efforts. Uh, what are your remarks on this? Yes. So I think uh, Pakistan has really taken uh, a lead uh, and, and, and there are very few countries who have made the kind of commitment which uh, the PTI government has shown through the Green Pakistan Initiative. And this is something to be highlighted uh, abroad because um, uh, you, you see a lot of advanced countries uh, taking a back step on their promises uh, in the recent COP meeting. Uh, and I think Green Pakistan really is, is, is a breath of fresh air coming from, the, from a developing country which is already uh, scarce on, on funding resources. That's one. I think the other aspect, of course, is, as I said earlier, uh, in terms of mitigation as well as, as, uh, as, well as adaptation, uh, the, the developed countries need to realize their commitment. Of course, uh, they, they have a large uh, 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 sort of funding envelope which they need to uh, sort of fill in uh, to, to, to sort of uh, uh, get uh, the, 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 the damage which has been incurred under control. Uh, the corporate sector, of course, has to realize their responsibility uh, and, and under both mitigation as well as adaptation scenarios. Right, and also uh, technology and artificial intelligence are also at the forefront of uh, this forum. And uh, how, uh, where does Pakistan stand right now? How much further do we need to take uh, our country as far as this is concerned? Yes, I think in this, um, a, a key aspect is the, the future of work. And as we move towards uh, increased use of technology, automation, uh, 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 industrial uh, uh, revolution 4.0, I think production processes are being changed. Now, this is going to have impact on labor market. A lot of your 
current skill set which the labor uses is going to be uh, is going to become redundant uh, now this in turn is going to give rise to global inequality and this is where probably uh, uh, leadership of both developed as well as developing countries need to be thinking very uh, 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 sincerely that what is it that uh, one is supposed to do uh, to, to, to sort of mitigate global inequalities going forward and, uh, and labor would require expanded a set of social safety nets. Uh, that is something which needs to be decided at the UN level. Right. Okay. And, and how about the role of the youth going forward in Pakistan's economy and development? Because we have a youth bulge and as far as educating the youth and skill building is concerned, what are the steps uh, to go forward? Yes, I, I think one of the key things here is to uh, uh, is for the government to work on integrating Pakistan youth with not just uh, education sector, but also uh, the, the labor markets abroad. A key aspect that one finds uh, deficient uh, in, in Pakistan's youth is, of course, uh, its, its uh, compatibility with uh, the, 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 the demands of global labor market. I think this is where our higher education systems uh, need to be aligned in line with global demand. Our vocational as well as uh, technical training facilities need to be aligned with global demand. Now, I think meetings like these are an excellent uh, forum where uh, one really needs to discuss what other countries are doing, number one, and what is it uh, that the Pakistani government can really uh, do in collaboration with other economies, such as, for example, exchange program for youth, uh, and, and, and I'm sure there could be other variants which, which can be promoted through uh, youth diplomacy. Right. Thank you so much for joining us on 9, uh, Dr. Vakar Ahmed. Uh, and uh, also, um, Dr. Frida, we were talking about how the World Economic Forum is a very good networking environment. So yes. there are going to be business leaders there. They're going to be CEOs of top corporations yes. there, etc. So uh, this is a good time for the whole delegation that's gone with the Prime Minister yes. to actually attract those business leaders to, yes. uh, you know, see Pakistan now because the security situation, there's still a perception mm -hmm. abroad, according to recent reports, mm -hmm. that you know, Pakistan um, may be, you know, still not completely safe for investment, mm -hmm. etc. So these are the kind of forums where you clear up those perceptions. Exactly. And, and represent Pakistan and represent all that is uh, the positive changes that are taking place in Pakistan, um, highlighting the fact that we have such a young population. Mm. We have 60% of our people, and uh, you know, who are in the working age bracket. Right. So these are the kind of human resources which are available to us. Their grooming can really transform the way, um, you know, business is done, not only within Pakistan, but the same opportunities can be honed in by the multinational companies as well and the leaders of these multinational companies are at Davos. Mm -hmm. So it's a great opportunity to help them realize what Pakistan has to offer. Right, absolutely. And also uh, tourism. As yes. far as uh, Pakistan has been trying to promote itself for tourism, because yeah. we, since the day that Prime Minister Imran Khan was sworn into office, mm -hmm. he's been talking about Pakistan's potential, its beauty, etc. So at such a forum like this, that, that would also be an ideal place to sort of project Pakistan's yes. uh, tourism potential. And, and you must, uh, you know, over here give full credit to our premier he is a very charismatic person so I mean his charisma will work in Pakistan's favor at this time because you see I think Pakistan is a kind of a secret um, that is why you know we are getting rave reviews these also mm -hmm. days that we are uh, you know a kind of a, a country which is a very um, which holds a lot of curiosity for the for the West uh, so as long as they're assured that uh, it is a safe place to travel, I think a lot of opportunities can be created. Right, and it's been labeled an adventure travel destination, yes. one of the top in the world. And, mm -hmm. you know, because of all its uh, its peaks and exactly. its northern areas, and uh, we have some of the highest peaks in the world in exactly. the Himalayas. So mm -hmm. that's always been an attraction for your sort of adventure tourists, uh, mountaineers, etc. Mm -hmm. But now we're sort of trying to take it into the mainstream for tourism as well. Tourism as well, and trying to counter the negative propaganda by the Indian lobby that maybe, you know, it's not a safe place or maybe it's, it, you know, it's an unsafe place to travel. It's a good 
uh, you know, uh, a point where all the important uh, corporate as well as the governmental leaders are there that these uh, issues, that these negative uh, images can be dispelled. Right. So there's a lot of work ahead. And yes. definitely uh, Prime Minister Imran Khan has a huge job ahead of him mm. to uh, whatever he's trying to achieve at Davos and otherwise as well mm. as far as the economy is concerned. Because mm. at the end of the day, it comes down to yes. that. Uh, how well does our economy do? And uh, recently, the Prime Minister has asked the business community mm. uh, to you know, pay their taxes to ensure mm. the country's prosperity. We also know that the business community has had their gripes about um, the different IMF measures, uh, you know, electricity mm. tariffs also uh, going up and the interest rates being higher. So your comments on this, uh, ma'am, that um, mm. the, 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 he's just had a meeting with the leaders of the chambers mm. and all, and they were asking for relief. Yeah. Yes, you know, there are some real issues there. But I tell you what, perception is a big deal. Um, a perception means that um, is there a feel-good factor about the country? If there is, then the investors will uh, keep looking at this particular destination and as soon as the conditions on ground even show a minimal improvement, uh, then you will see that uh, uh, you will get a lot of in investment interest in Pakistan. Already the hot money is coming in because you see the interest rate, while on the one hand it is, you know, um, it has an issue in terms of long-term investments or business, um, uh, the environment, but at the same time, uh, the uh, money in the portfolio investment takes place because of that. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, as, so, as long as there is a positive perception about the country, then uh, as some of the issues, um, they are resolved, you will see that improvement will start taking place. Right, this. absolutely. We have online with us Dr. Kamran Naki, who's an economist. Thank you, sir, for joining us on our program. My uh, idea sir, is business strategy. Right, okay. So, sir, now at the, we were talking about the World Economic Forum where the Prime Minister is uh, attending, um, you know, in Davos, he's attending this forum with his aides and his, uh, you know, close aides and his delegation. So, in your opinion, as far as Pakistan's economy and its investment is concerned, what opportunities can Pakistan avail at this uh, forum? As far well as Pakistan economy is concerned, thank you. Uh, uh, Pakistan economy is concerned, it's, uh, it will take some time. And recently, uh, yesterday, there is a report from IMF, and uh, that report has again revised the world economic growth, and it's not very positive, and uh, it is approximately 3.3%, and because of a very slow growth in, in India. And similarly, Pakistan's growth, we are anticipating less than 3%, what IMF is. So as far as economies are concerned, there is a lot of uncertainties. One of the uncertainties has been very much uh, reflected in the World Economic Forum and how to invest the money, where to invest the money. This is one of the major concerns of many investors. Are. And sluggish economies, and number two issue is, uh, is climate change. Climate change is the center uh, point of discussion here. And uh, about an hour ago, uh, Mr. Trump, uh, President Trump, has uh, made in his speech, and he he uh, he put the people that how we can bring our citizens and how we can invest on our citizens. This is the best way of coming out of the problem of every country. And he also pledged that he would be part of that uh, trillion, three trillion trees, uh, part of that pledge, which. I am a yeah, World Economic Forum, Forum is trying to promote. And Pakistan definitely will, uh, Imran Khan, Prime Minister Imran Khan will definitely apprise how much Pakistan has taken initiative in terms of world, in terms of environment change and climate change. And that is one of the positive incentive for many investors, local and in, international, that, uh, uh, that that is very important that how, how much we are ready for climate change and sustainable development goals because these are the important thing if we want to make our business or if we want to do business internationally. And number two important issue is Pakistan's export strategy. What are the incentives for investors to come and invest in exports from Pakistan or Pakistani exporters' exports? So that's very important point.
and uh, I think the World Economic Forum uh, will more would more focus on climate change and it, those initiatives are very very important because uh, uh, as far as FATF is concerned that is an important issue that is also uh, Pakistan can put how we can we have taken some good initiative for investment how much we have improved the security concerns these are the some positive uh, progress which uh, um, uh, uh, Prime Minister Imran Khan should highlight and that is very important because when we talk about economy and when we talk about international business, international business can only be, our economy can only move when there is a financial system is also smoothly moving and that area is very much important, a financial system in Pakistan documentation and okay. these things are very very important nowadays and Pakistan has taken comprehensive initiative on that area and that is also a very important concern for investors and uh, business communities to learn about Pakistan. Then Pakistan can also promote tourism. That is a very important strategy for in inviting, invest inviting investors to invest in tourism also. Also, okay. tourism industry is also uh, one of the important uh, areas where we can really uh, can pitch and we can really enhance our export in the short term through service businesses. In the long run, definitely, the economy will come out of the problem. It will take another three to five years and ten years. So we should not be very much... Uh, one thing very important is that we have to be a very long-term oriented society. We have to change our mindset to, the, to think about get, that results should come very quickly. It's right. a game of patience, it's a game of effort, it's a game of a struggle. That's Absolutely. Very Thank important. you so much. Right. Thank you so much, Dr. Kamran Naki. Absolutely. This is a, a game of a lot of patience, like uh, Dr. Saab is just saying. Uh, Ma'am, your final remarks on mm. uh, this uh, topic, that Pakistan's economy mm. now we're facing slow growth. We've just discussed mm. that. Mm -hmm. uh, demand has shrink is uh, shrinking. It's sort of uh, due to a lack of import substitution. Industry slowing down and all. We have some monumental tasks ahead of us. And mm. export potential for Pakistan is mm. a key factor over here. Hmm. How can we overcome these challenges? I think that uh, particularly in the context of DEVOS, um, Pakistani businesses have to move into the global value chains. So that is one way uh, um, that uh, it's an opportunity that the entire production process does not have to take, a, take place in Pakistan. But even if we can contribute part of that production process, and identify certain key players with whom we can establish partnerships, mm -hmm. then it is possible even in the short run to be able to at least address those foreign markets which uh, are very difficult to capture because once you lose those markets, then it is very difficult to regain them. And that is one of the reasons why your exports are not picking up. Mm -hmm. So opportunities like this create the spaces where the Pakistani business can then enter and then find those partners who will enable us to join into those global value chains Absolutely. where we can improve our manufacturing sector that right. is going to be very very important and and also uh, branding of our local products yes which we we don't see that yes, much and right. particularly agriculture as well you were talking about uh, the um, you know changes in technology which are taking place those need to be applied in the agro sector agro industrial sector because that is the backbone of the economy absolutely thank you so much for joining us again dr farida fessel and no doubt uh, prime minister imran khan and his team have a huge monumental task ahead of them uh, projecting Pakistan at the World Economic Forum and uh, trying to attract more investment into Pakistan. Let's wish them the best of luck. That's all the time for our program today. Thank you for watching Newsroom and we'll see you next time.